on this episode, I make the inner cylindrical bearings for the radio axle I started in the last episode. This part's extremely thin, with very little work holding opportunity, so stay tuned to see how I make it. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. The parts I'm making today are for a radio axle assembly. The radio axle box allows the trailing wheels of the train to move and rotate as it goes around corners. This specific version has sliding axle boxes with cylindrical bearings to allow for the movement. Now let's get on with it. First up I need to finish the outer part of the cylindrical bearing, which I made in the last episode. For this I'm making a small brass bushing, which we pressed into the part. I'm starting with some brass rod, turning it down to the correct diameter. Once I've taken a skim cup, I measure the diameter. I then use this to set the digital readout. From there I can take the final cut and then drill the through hole. With the hole drilled, the next step is to part it off. I locate the tool at the end of the part and zero the digital readout. From here I can set the length and part it off. Time to press it in. For this I'm going to use the vise, and the main trick here is just getting it lined up. Once it's pressed in, I give it a quick clean up with a file and it's ready to go. So it's off to the bench to install it. With the outer part of the cylindrical bearing installed, it's time to deal with the inside part. It has a cylindrical exterior, which will match the interior of the part we just fitted. It also has a hole for the axle box to run through. This is set at 13 degrees, and the top also has some features we'll need to machine in. I'm making this part from a free machining steel round bar. It's almost the perfect diameter, so I give it a quick polish and we're ready to go. I part it off with some extra material. We're going to use this for work holding. For the next steps, we're going to be using the mill, and I have the rotary table set up with a collet chuck. I'm using a 12mm end mill and I'm removing the waste material from either side first. This will leave me with a 10mm thick part.
right with the part down to thickness, it's time to rotate it. The next feature I'm going to cut is a 13 degree slot for the axle box. I'm going to cut this a couple of millimetres at a time until I get to the desired depth. For the slot feature cup, it's time to switch over to the drill chuck for a drilled hole. Once the hole's drilled, it's time to remove it from the chuck. The next step will be to deburr it, so let's head over to the bench. For the deep burring complete, it's over to the horizontal pan saw. I'm now going to remove the work holding material as the machining's finished on this end. Now it's back to the mill again, where I switched the collet chuck for a toolmaker's vise. I sent to the part before locating an end mill and the drill chuck. Okay, those are words you should never say. Never use a drill chuck for milling, it doesn't provide enough side support. But actually what I'm going to do is drill a flat bottomed hull. Once again, end mills aren't designed for drilling hulls, but if the flutes actually go to the centre, then it works. Well, at least well enough for what we need. The next step is to remove the waste material from the top of the part. With the waste material gone, the part's the size, so it's time to cut the circular feature on top of the part. For this I'm using the rotary table, and I've offset the table for the radius I need. Well that didn't work, obviously the part wasn't fixed down well enough, and it pulled out of the vise. Unfortunately it damaged the part, so I had to make another one. Right, with the magic of video, new part made. This time the vise is definitely tightened up. I'm making the cuts in a couple of passes, a half a millimetre at a time. The end mill is 4mm diameter, so the depth of cuts going to be pretty limited with it. Well at least if I want the end mill to stay in one piece. With the circular feature cut, I've got a couple of square edges to cut, and we're almost there. Part can now be removed from the vise given a quick clean up with a file and it's ready to go. It slips into place 
and here you can see the two located in place. When you see these parts finished, it's pretty amazing that they even can be machined, with so little material remaining. But as you can see, it all comes down to your process and thinking about work holding. The next step will be to fit some bronze axle boxes, but that'll have to wait for next time. Thanks for watching, and if you've missed any episodes, check out my playlist from the beginning. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and share it with a friend. Catch you next time.